I'm John McPeak and you're watching Community Focus, presented by the Friends of MCTV. In this third segment, our guests are Betty O'Neill, the Director of Fund Development for Family and Children's Services, and Amy McDonald, an outpatient therapist. Ladies, welcome to Community Focus. Thank you. Thank you. Betty, Family and Children's Services has some new support groups. What can you tell our viewers about them? Yeah, we're starting two new LGBTQ support groups. There will be one for adults, one for teens, and they'll provide a confidential, safe environment. We're going to call both groups Compass. And why are these Compass groups being formed? Well, you know, we've existed for over 90 years to meet needs, and it was clear that there was a need for this kind of support and information in our community. There is nothing similar going on at all in the Tri-Cities. The closest thing for teens is maybe in Saginaw or Bay City, but there are no groups at all that are staffed at all by therapists. So it's a real need for our local people. What are the goals of these groups? You know, we want to promote health and well-being and reduce risk. And we're going to work with building skills and self-esteem and help people gain some strategies to deal with the things they face, like family rejection, social isolation, and even discrimination. Well, Amy, what are some of the challenges that are faced by people in the LGBTQ community? There's plenty of challenges, feeling accepted, understanding their own identity, understanding um, their struggles with their relationships and how that relates to their LGBT identity. Uh, there's fears of coming out, rejection. Families may not accept them, their peers may not accept them, and understanding how that plays a role and how they've been going forward. With adults, it's a little bit different, um, especially if you're coming out at an older age, struggling with workplace acceptance of mm -hmm. do you come out. Another big thing with LGBT of all ages is the continually um, pattern of coming out over and over again. It's never a one-time coming out. Um, it's a lifelong thing that you'll come out to employers, next partners, friends, and, and things like that. So it's a struggle, and we haven't been talking about those kind of issues in our community, and I, I just really think it's an important thing that we're doing. So some of the challenges uh, are the uh, the effects of some of the uh, negative factors that that are involved with uh, with being uh, different and then coming out, uh, such as depression, anxiety. You know. Yeah, they're definitely higher risk. I think uh, twelve to twenty percent of suicide rate um, or, or attempted suicide mm -hmm. rates or thoughts of suicide. Um, Eighty to ninety percent of all LGBT students report being bullied or harassed, which in, which affects their self esteem. So young people, you have two different groups, an adult and a teen, so young people face different special challenges? I think so. Um, the young people, because they're, they're still struggling with who I am. They're still struggling with who they like, who they want to be mm -hmm. with, what kind of healthy relationships. When you add on that they're in the same sex relationships, it becomes a struggle. And then you compound that with factors that families who may not be supportive, um, family backgrounds that have always said that this would be not a healthy choice. So it, it, they come from some tough, tough obstacles to come out. And in, the, in their peer group, their social situation at school and other mm -hmm. places like that, there's, there obviously is the same, some of the same factors. Absolutely. And, and as the young person still unsure of who they are, uh, it has to have a lot of uh, uh, impact. Homelessness, is that a um, yeah. factor? Yes, it's, um, I don't have the stats for that one on me, but okay. surprisingly, it's, it's very high even in, in the Tri-Cities area. Often when individuals come out, their families aren't accepting and they kick them out. That's a story that's been heard over and over again, and that's uh, some of the reasons um, young people don't come out to their family. They keep it inside, and, uh, but when, if they do come out, if they're found out, um, they're kicked out or, mm -hmm. you know. I actually just read these statistics yesterday, and it's 25% of teens are actually thrown out of their own homes by their parents. According to the CDC, they make up 40% of the young adult homeless population in our country. Mm. It's a huge obstacle for teenagers to find a way to tell their parents when they face that kind of possibility. Well, Betty, when and where will these Compass groups meet? The groups are starting on April 10th. They'll meet right at Family and Children's Services here in Midland. Mm -hmm. People can just contact us at 631-5390 and ask for information about our new support groups. Um, and we'll make sure that they get everything they need so that they can come. It's free. There'll be closed groups. It's a safe environment for the eight weeks that those groups meet. You have a limited number of uh, members in each group? Well, there will be a limit. Mm -hmm. Right now, uh, we anticipate being able to meet the need, but there will be more more sessions running so please don't be afraid to call even if you can't get into this first session we will offer more and it's eight week session it's an eight week, eight week session sessions. yes and the staffing is uh, is is a professional licensed professional yes therapist. licensed master's level therapists will lead each group Amy is taking the first two herself and probably will be mass managing this program going forward 
So again, there's no cost for the program, no. and they can contact uh, the Family and Children's family Services. And, children's at, services. and you also have a uh, website. Absolutely, and you can get information on our website. That's fcs-midland.org. And the phone number again is 631-5390. Well, Amy, Betty, thank you for bringing that timely information to our viewers.